Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us take the next example. Here, you want to find the volume of a solid whose base is the disc x square plus y square is less than or equal to 1. So, that is painted blue here. That is the disc, it is a solid. So, you get the circle along with the points inside it. That is why you call it a disc. So, that is the disc. Uh, where the base is, base of the solid is. And then the cross sections by planes perpendicular to the y axis. So, if you take any cross sectional area, but take the slice or the cross section of the solid uh, by taking a plane which is perpendicular to y axis that is parallel to x z plane, then you will get the limits for y as minus 1 and 1. So, that is how it happens on the y axis, that is how it gives y equal to minus 1 to y equal to 1. And it forms an isosceles right angle, right triangle with one leg in the disc. So, it is an isosceles triangle. So, this leg is equal to this leg, side of these two becomes same, that is what it says, with one leg in the disc. Then, so we are really using the cross sectional area perpendicular to the y axis instead of x axis here. So, our integrals will correspond similarly with respect to y and this cross sectional area has to be written as a function of y. Okay. So, what is the cross sectional area here? Since it is a triangle we know, it is a triangular area. So, all that we get is half times uh, half its base and the height, but they are same that is same thing as the leg in the disc. So, it is half times leg square, but what is exactly the leg? The leg lies between 2 say y equal to minus 1 to y equal to 1 and it is inside the disc x square plus y square less than or equal to 1. So, if you take any y here 0 to y let us say this way. So, the length is y then this length will be square root of 1 minus y square square root because it is in the uh, circle x square plus y square equal to 1. So, that x coordinate will be this and then on the other side you have similarly it is this length. So, you may say it is 2 times 1 minus y square right is it so it is half into square root of 1 minus y square plus again the same thing. So, it is 2 times square root of 1 minus y square and leg is equal to that much 2 times square root of 1 minus y square. So, half leg square will be this one into its square and that simplifies to 2 into 1 minus y square. So, the cross sectional area we know then we can compute the volume and we know the limits for y are minus 1 and 1. So, the volume will be equal to minus 1 to 1 area of that cross sectional area a of y dy. So, that just plugging in we get 2 integral minus 1 to 1 1 minus y square dy and its integral 1 integral gives you y, y square gives y cubed by 3. So, this is to be evaluated at 1 and minus 1 and then subtracted. So, that you compute and you see that it is equal to 8 divided by 3. Okay. So, sometimes we may have the need to the problem itself dictates whether you take the x axis or you take the y axis or the z axis whichever is appropriate to the problem we will be taking that. Here in this problem it is already given that the cross section 
by planes perpendicular to the y axis. So, that means, we have to choose cross sectional area in terms of y, we have to choose to express that in terms of y, that gives the volume as 8 divided by 3. So, let us take some more problems. So, this is the first problem. We want to find the volume of the solid that lies between planes perpendicular to the x axis at x equal to minus 1 and at x equal to 1. So, you have the x axis, there is a plane here x equal to minus 1 and the plane here x equal to 1. So, within this the solid lies and that is its projection to x axis is minus 1 to 1. Okay. Now, the cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are circular disks. So, once you take at any point x here, you will get a circular disk that is the cross section whose diameter runs from the parabola y equal to x square to y equal to 2 minus x square. So, its diameter it is this one is really within two parabolas, right. So, maybe something like this, not exactly. So, one end of that is in one of the parabola say x square, the other end is at another parabola which is 2 minus x square. So, that means, we have to compute first this diameter, then get the circular area. Okay. So, let us see it exactly how it looks. So, this is how it is. You have one parabola which is y equal to x square, another parabola is y minus y equal to 2 minus x square and the diameter of that cross sectional area lies between these two parabolas. Okay. Say one parabola is here, another is there on the other side. So, that is the diameter of the circle. Okay. So, now how do we get the diameter? Diameter will be the difference between the y coordinates. So, that gives 2 minus x square as from the one parabola and the other one is x square. So, it is minus x square that is the diameter. right? So, it is really 2 uh, minus 2 x square that is the diameter. So, it is really a circle going below also that is the cross sectional area it is a circle it is a circular disc. So, the area of that disc which is the cross sectional area will be equal to pi into diameter square. right? But, we are taking only half of that here. So, the cross sectionals perpendicular to the x axis are circular disks. So, what happens here? It is only half of that is shown here. So, that half will be equal to pi divided by 4 or into radius square. However, we want directly the circle then we can really do that. It is simply pi by 4 into diameter square is that it is pi r square, but we are taking diameter. So, it is pi into d by 2 square or pi by 4 diameter square and this cross sectional area will be equal to pi by 4 into diameter is 2 minus 2 x square, it is whole square and that simplifies to pi into 1 minus 2 x square plus x fourth. So, once this is achieved, it will be easier to compute the volume just by a formula. Volume will be from minus 1 to 1, which is already given in the problem, and the A x, which is pi into 1 minus 2 x square plus x fourth, it is integral. So, 1 integral is x and uh, x square x square is x cubed by 3, 2 remains, x fourth is x fifth by 5, and this is to be evaluated at 1 and minus 1 and subtracted. So, that would give rise to 16 pi divided by 5. So, here you see we have not really uh, plotted the whole solid, how does it look, but we have already the information that it is from minus 1 to 1. So, it is something like a right cylindrical type, but not exactly cylinder, it is not uniform. At x, it is of this circle, at another point x, it will be a smaller circle or maybe bigger circle depending on where this uh, x is, right. So, that is how it looks, but it is enough to find the cross sectional area because anyway it will be plugged in in the integral. 
So, that is what we have to plot in the figure, how to get the area of the cross section. Okay. So, let us take the next problem. Uh, okay. Find the volume of the solid that lies between planes perpendicular to the x axis at x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 1. So, the solid now lies between uh, two planes perpendicular to the x axis at x equal to minus 1, x equal to 1. So, we got the limits for x. That means, we must have the cross sectional area expressed in terms of x. Now, the cross sections perpendicular to the x axis between these planes are squares. So, it is a simpler one, it is squares whose diagonals run from the semicircle y equal to square root of 1 minus x square with negative sign to the semicircle y equal to square root of 1 minus x square. So, it is a square whose diagonals are of this type, not the sides. Fine. So, what do we do? We want to find area of that cross sectional uh, cross section. So, since it is a square, then its area will be equal to half into diagonal square, right? Because if the side is some a and its diagonal is root 2 a, so a square means it is half of diagonal square. And since we have the diagonal, diagonal will be between y equal to minus square root of 1 minus x square to y equal to square root of 1 minus x square. So, the length of the diagonal will be this one is bigger square root of 1 minus x square minus that which gives 2 into square root of 1 minus x square. We have to take its square and multiply with half. So, that gives 2 into 1 minus x square. So, that is how we get the cross sectional area. So, once the cross sectional area is obtained, we know already the limits. So, the volume will be equal to minus 1 to 1 ax dx integral that gives 2 integral minus 1 to 1 and it is 1 minus x square this 2 into 1 minus x square 2 we have taken out dx. So, that gives 1 as the integral x x square as x cubed by 3. So, this 2 times x minus x cubed by 3 evaluated at 1 and minus 1 and then subtracted. So, that simplifies to 8 divided by 3. So, here of course, the problem itself simplifies a lot for us. We have not even found out the picture nothing, we just look at uh, what will be the diameter or the diagonal of that uh, square which is the cross section. Since everything is given in the problem, we did not have the need to plot it and that became easier. Okay. So, let us take another problem. Here we have to of we want to find the volume of a solid that lies between planes perpendicular to the y axis. So, that means, we have we may have to express the cross sectional area in terms of y and the planes are y equal to 0 and y equal to 2 between which the solid lies. So, we have the limits for y which are 0 and 2. Now, what about the cross sections? the cross sections perpendicular to the y axis are circular disks. So, that means, at any point y, if you take a any choose any point at y, then that will be the a circular disks, right? that is how it will look, that will be the cross sectional area. And what is the constant on that circular disk? Those disks with half diameters running from the y axis to the parabola. So, it is not this way. So, it says that the circular disk diameter runs from y axis to the parabola y equal to square root of 5 minus x square. So, that means, this exactly will be the diameter. If this is our parabola y x equal to or y equal to root 5 x square or since it is from y axis we are taking let us take this way x equal to root 5 y square. So, this is how it will look like. Fine. Had you taken the other way, but anyway diameter runs from that to x equal to uh, minus 5 root y, answer will be same, right. Volume is positive anyway here. So, it is positive. So, we take the diameter this way and plot the picture 
on the first quadrant. So, once this is diameter you have a circular disc here right. So, that is how the solid is. So, in fact, everywhere it is circular the solid now looks like this ok. So, it is a solid something like a cone type it is not cone looks like that right. So, on over this everywhere there is a circle now ok that is how it looks. Then we want to find the volume of this. So, all that we have to do is compute this cross sectional area it is the disc whose diameter is uh, given by this length. So, this length is running from y uh, to this point on the curve. So, that is x equal to 0 to x equal to root 5 y square for any point y that is be its length. So, its length will be root 5 y minus 0 ok it is really root 5 y ok x equal to uh, x equal to uh, root it is y equal to root 5 x square. So, x is equal to uh, it is not root 5 y right then uh, but we, we have root 5 y here. So, this diameter is really root 5 y. So, that means uh, what is the parabola? It is x equal to root 5 y or y equal to 5 x square right. So, y equal to 5 x square not root 5 y equal to 5 x square. So, that you can write x equal to root 5 y is the uh, correct one ok. Uh, root 5 times y square. So, let us take the parabola as x equal to root 5 y square instead of complicating it with y equal to so on so on it is just the parabola is x equal to root 5 y square. So, once you have x equal to root 5 y square. So, I have a correction here we have the parabola as x equal to root 5 y square not y equal to there is a typo. So, with this we find the diameter to be this point minus that 0 that is root 5 y minus 0 and cross sectional area is a of y it is 5 by 4 diameter square which is 5 by 4 root 5 y minus 0 square 5 by 4 pi y fourth. Now, the volume of the solid which is having all circular disc here right. So, that volume will be equal to integral 0 to 2 uh, a y d y which is 0 to 2 already y equal to 0 to 2 5 by 4 pi uh, y fourth d y. So, y fourth as uh, 5 y fourth gives you y fifth and we have uh, pi by 4 evaluated at 0 to 2. So, that gives you 8 